lesson for Shout at the Devil by Motley Crue. This one, like most Motley Crue tunes, is tuned down a whole step. So before we get going, I'll give you some starting notes here. That's your sixth string. This string A is going to be tuned down to a G. Fourth string D tuned down to a C. Third string G tuned down to an F. Second string B tuned down to an A. and your first string E tuned down to a D. So tone-wise, I've dialed up a distorted tone. Lots of sustain. Got a guitar with a humbucking pickup. That's gonna add to that kind of growl and sustain. A little thicker than a single coil. And then I've also got a guitar equipped with a whammy bar. A little section in here that uh, does some whammy bar stuff. Not a big deal if you don't have it, but if you do have it, grab that one. Let's take a look at the intro. So the first part of the intro here, we're just playing this open A, seventh fret, doing a palm mute, and grabbing with our first finger on the fifth fret, a little dyad there. Got that sustain, and doing a quick kind of a noise, just sliding along there, not anything in particular, just on those bass strings. And then doing the same thing again, but this time grabbing the 7th fret. So instead of 1st fret, 1st uh, finger on 5th fret, now we're grabbing the 3rd finger and the 7th fret dyad. Let that ring, that repeats. So again, palm mute on those first two notes. Slide up, and there's a, a muted note in the middle of that. So in both of those, we've got that muted note, we're just kind of creating that chunky sound. And that's just basically picking with your fingers, lightly touching the strings, getting that kind of scratchy sound. One of those sustained dyads gets a little vibrato. Shaking that finger. Like that. And then it goes to uh, a pattern where we do it quicker. And then play a riff. We'll play that riff slowly, hammer on. And then our two dyads. Repeat that riff. And on the end of that riff, we do a pinch harmonic. You're gonna have to search around for that pinch harmonic. You'll find it. Remember the side of the, side of the pick there, let the string kind of bounce up, hit the flesh of the thumb, get that harmonic to sound. Then we're gonna go into some unison bends, but let's play this part again so you have that under your fingers. From the top of the intro, starting out with the palm mutes and the open note here. Vibrato, slide up. Vibrato, slide up. Slide up. And then repeat the riff quicker. there and now we're doing these unison bends so it's going to create this melody now the trick with unison bends is getting them in tune because they're unison bends so the notes should be the same so you've got this 13th fret that you're keeping solid and then you're bending this note up on the 15th fret so they should be the same note 
If they're not, you're going to notice it. It's going to sound very dissonant. When you get them in tune, you'll notice. Now remember, we're tuned down a whole step, so if you've got a standard set of strings in that you normally have tuned up, these strings are going to be very loose, so you're not going to have to push too hard to get this to be in tune. Um, the tendency will be to overbend it. You don't want to do that. So just kind of use your ear. Make sure you're listening. Just don't go by feel, because it's going to feel different with these looser strings. No vibrato on this. Sometimes you we will do vibrato on those unison bends, but these, these have none. So just keep them straight. Try to move those fingers as a unit. Don't do this. Almost view it as a chord. I'm keeping my fingers in contact with those strings as I'm moving down. And I am using a support finger, not just using the third finger, not just using the second. So second and third are both on the third string. Obviously, it doesn't matter what's happening with the second finger because it's behind the fret. But always use the support finger when we're bending, if possible. So that'll get you through the intro. Now the verse will primarily use power chords. Let's take a look. So the power chords we're using for the verse are a D5, move down two frets for a C5, and here's the pattern we're playing. So it's going D5, C5, twice on A5, lead strum. Get that C5 with an upstroke. Just kind of quick there. D5 twice. Root strum. And then choke off the A5. Meaning we're playing it staccato. So no sustain on it at all. Mute it with the right hand and the left hand so you get no ringing at all. That repeats. Again. And then the last one here, we do something different. So show you what's going on there after we do the D, C, root strum, C5, pull off, keeping the third finger down, pull off to that open note, form the chord again, arpeggiate, so we're playing just the two notes, and then move the first finger down to the second fret. Now if that's troublesome for you, if that's too much of a stretch, you can do that with the pink and to that note. That's just an easier stretch. So it depends how, how uh, flexible you are with the, the stretch between the first and third fingers. But again, pull off. Play through the verse, uh, moderate speed all the way through. Two, three, four. changes. And that's it for the verse. Now for the chorus, we'll pull a riff right out of the intro. So you can recognize this riff from the chorus, or from the intro, I should say, it's used for the chorus now. So let's slow it down, see what's going on. Again, this is from the intro, same thing. Start off with those palm mutes, open A and the seventh fret. Do a hammer on riff. Using 
first and third fingers on that. Bar. Pinch harmonic with vibrato. kind of random, so if you want to throw one in, it's not a big deal. You can kind of spice it up a little bit. Um, there's no pattern to where the pinch harmonics occur. I'm just playing it exactly as it was recorded here. So let's do the chorus one more time. Remember to do those palm mutes on the first two notes. Release. Palm mute. Palm mute. Palm mute, no palm mute. Palm mute, off. 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 It's really only occurring on those uh, those first two notes. Call it an A five. It's really uh, just an A. So we're palm that. Let's do it slowly. Two, three, four. So now we're on to a second verse and a second chorus, and this will be a repeat. So let's take a look at the solo. We're going to combine the rhythm part and the solo. So we've got some unison bends for the solo, a little bit of a trill with a whammy bar, but we're also combining the something we can all play together instead of having to play it separately. So let's take a look at the solo. Let me play through the solo up to speed and then we'll break it down. And again, I'm combining the rhythm and the solo. So I might have led you astray in the intro when I said uh, grab a guitar with a whammy bar. I remember listening to this song and thinking it was done with a whammy bar, this little... But it's really not. Um, it's just done... Um, with a bend, or another place you can get it... If you have a guitar that's got a tail piece that you can... Um, bend the note, so like a Les Paul would have that little space between it. You can kind of push on that note and get it. I guess you could also push on the note here. Um, but I'll demonstrate it. You know, you're just basically just pulling the string. It's going to sound a little different because you can hear that return, but um, you know, I'm locked in here, so I can't, I can't demonstrate it that way. But that's just a minor part of the solo. Let's talk about what's going on here in the beginning. We've got the open E and then grabbing this um, unison bend on 8 and then open E again move down to 7 move down to 5 I want to stress we are playing both rhythm and lead here so the lead would just go but the rhythm's kind of cool it makes the solo sound complete and it's easy enough to play both and then we've got this little uh, rhythm part kind of fun to play. So let's play it again. First part of that is palm muted. Zero, two, three, zero, two, three. Make sure when you're playing this that you're not letting this notes ring. Not gonna sound good. So after you play these notes, mute, mute. Trilling on 12 and 15, second, second string there. Trilling is just doing a quick hammer on pull off and then throwing in those bends. Again, do it slowly. Anyway, 
Actually, what we're trying to get up to is a step and a half at this first three. And that's a step. You don't have to be too precise with that. We're just trying to go for the effect of those notes rising and falling real quickly. Do a riff again. This time we grab a harmonic. It's part of the solo. Those harmonics are on the um, second and third strings on the fifth fret. Just a quick little harmonic. Natural harmonic. And we finish out. Unison bend, we have the 10, and then a bend here at the second fret. And this is very quick. As it's bend, pick it, and then grab these notes. That's the rhythm to the back in, back into the verse. So we've got a G, G sharp five. G5. Actually, the first note is a G5, G sharp five. And those notes are choked off. So you're listening to this, make sure you're listening to both the rhythm and the solo. Let's take it one more time. Um, from the top, I'll just play through everything slowly. Guitar solo. So now we're on to a third verse in a chorus, and those will be a repeat as well. For that last chorus, we're going to have the guitar tacit for a bit while the vocals do the shout, shout, shout at the devil, and then we're going to come in with our standard chorus riff. <laughs> Then the chorus starts to do something different. We do some sliding dyads. So let's take a look at that, as well as the ending where we do some unison bends again. So on the outro here where it starts to change, we're just sliding up those dyads that we played before. Along with our riff in, the, in between it. And we're doing a more, more uh, picking on the, on the palm muted open A there. Palm mute the open A's. And we're sliding with first finger, four to five, and those two middle strings, and then six to seven with the third finger. It's going to sound like this. So those palm mutes really add to the punctuation of the riff. Make sure that you lift it off when you're doing those chords. Those chords should jump out. Now we're back to doing our unison bends here. 13, 12, and 10. What I'm calling out there are the static notes, the ones, not, the ones that we're not bending, or the actual the pitch of the notes too. And then we go up to 15, back down to 10. And we repeat that and fade out. Again, make sure those bends are in tune. Put the outro together, um, up to speed, and we'll play out.
One more tip on those uh, bends that we're doing here. One thing to be careful of is that you don't bend the other note as you're it's going to put it all out of tune. So make sure that that first finger is very stable. You don't have to have a hard grip on it, but just make sure that you don't move it. And let, just let the other note get bent. So some of the tendency will be to bend it along with it. Sometimes you'll, you'll pull it in separate directions. So just make sure that note stays stable. And especially now that the strings are so loose being tuned down, it's easy to let that note slide a little bit. So make sure those bends are in tune. You'll be in good shape. Have fun with the tune.